Hello all. Welcome to the VoIP Traffic Analysis course on Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we'll look at how to decode DTMF uh, events in VoIP traffic. So what is DTMF? Well, it stands for Dual Tone Multi Frequency. So putting it very simply, whenever you call your credit card company and they tell you to punch in certain digits like your PIN code, and when you punch that in, these basically go as DTMF. Now, of course, in the case of VoIP, this is just going to go as, you know, bits and bytes. And depending on if this finally terminates onto some kind of a PSTN network, it'll be appropriately translated uh, to an actual DTMF tone. So DTMF events uh, pretty much are part of RTP traffic. And if you have access to RTP and you try to find RTP events, uh, then you will actually be able to uncover DTMF if it is around. So let's actually look at the RFC real quick. So this is one of the RFCs for RTP. And you can notice that us in event types, we have DTMF tones. I'm going to go into the packet and then correlate some things here just to make our understanding more complete. So I'm going to go inside the DTMF directory and open up Wireshark DTMF lab one SIP RTP 129.pcap. So this is a pcap file in which we've simulated, you know, pressing all the digits uh, one after the other. And this is SIP plus RTP. So currently there is no encryption. So we can click on telephony, SIP flows, Let's select all the flows, create the flow sequence diagram. And what you'd actually see is these little telephone events showing up, right? Telephone events. So these telephone events are nothing but uh, basically DTMF events. So if we go ahead and figure out which packet this is. Let's see. Oh, my bad. Uh, it's the one right here. So if you notice, this specifically marks it at DTMF1, right? And if you look at the event, you actually see this is an RTP event. And if we expand the event, you'd see the event ID ends up containing the actual number which was pressed. So if you can see this says this was DTMF1. And if we apply a filter on RTP events, and you can do that very easily by saying RTP event, we would actually see all events. Now in this PCAP, the only kind of event is DTMF and we can see it here. Now, if when you're looking at this, you'd actually notice something interesting. We have a series of ones. Now, one reason is, of course, we are looking at both traffic together in the PCAP. So I'm just going to isolate it to one side, which is, let's say, Bob to the server. So I'm going to apply a filter ip.addr equals equals 192.168.20.136. Uh, this is one of the client IPs. And what you'd actually see right now, if we looked at SIP flows, is even though when we are looking at the SIP flows, we can see that DTMF1 was pressed by the client and that got relayed as DTMF1. Then DTMF2 got pressed, got relayed as DTMF2, right? But if we look at the PCAP, we end up seeing multiple DTMF ones, right? So these are all actually repetitions of the same one just to make sure, you know, in case packets are lost or something happens, the one still goes through. And there is uh, multiple ways by which you can figure out. So if you notice on the very first packet, you would actually see that the marker is actually set to true. But for all the other ones in quick succession, 
you'd actually see the marker which I've highlighted is actually set to false, right? So the marker being set to true means this is the first one. And this is something which is actually mentioned here. So specifically says the marker bit indicates the beginning of a new event, right? So this is the beginning of DTMF1. Now, one of the other interesting things you would notice is that the timestamp uh, within the RTP stream also remains constant for the repetitions. So if you look at DTMF1 right here on the top, and you notice the timestamp 97440, you'll actually see that for all the other ones which are repetition, the timestamp remains identical. And rightfully so, because this timestamp specifically tells the receiving party exactly where in the stream this event is happening, right? Where does it begin? So it makes sense to have the timestamp to be uh, the same. Now, additionally, what you'd actually find is at the very end, we have these end markers. And this is actually right here, end of event true. And a couple of them are sent at the very end, right? So uh, an easy way really without going into, um, you know, a very complicated way of figuring out what this is, is if you manage to have a good trace file at one of the uh, sites, then you would just have to look for DTMF event and then apply a filter for marker is true. So apply a filter and select it. And there you go. Now beautifully you get to see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, right? This isn't a foolproof way, it just depends how you collected the trace and is, you know, maybe you lost out the first marker packet, then the whole reassembly and figuring out uh, the digits is going to be a little bit more involved, you might probably have to script it. Now, again, all of these details are in here as well, if you want, you can actually read how the RFC recommends uh, that the series of the same event which is actually being sent in multiple packets uh, gets interpreted at the receiver side, right? Fantastic. Now, one of the interesting things is that we could also use this filter as is in Wireshark, or oh, sorry, T-Shark. So I could actually do a T-Shark dash R, DTMF lab one, SIP RTP, and apply this as the filter. And now we'd basically only see the DTMF traffic as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We can further distill this by only picking up the event ID. So this is basically RTP event dot event underscore ID. So we could distill this further by saying only extract certain fields and that is going to be RTP event dot event underscore ID. And you can clearly see we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? And now we may be getting this uh, kind of warning from time to time. That's simply because we've ended up applying our, uh, you know, SSL dissector pretty much to, to all ports. Uh, let's actually remove that file. So I'm gonna do a config Wireshark SSL keys. So once we remove this, uh, we won't get that warning anymore, right? Fantastic, so you can clearly see how we can recover DTMF. Now, why is this interesting? Uh, well, what you'd find is later uh, in a video, when someone is actually calling into their voicemail over VoIP, and they have to punch in their DTMF code as a passcode to listen to their voicemail messages, at that time, if an attacker has access to the RTP traffic, then he can figure out the voicemail passcode by simply doing what we've done here right now, right? So in this PCAP, we had RTP unencrypted. What I've done is I've also have two other PCAPs in here. So one of them is uh, basically DTMF lab to SIP plus SRTP. Now we have already decrypted a ton of these, uh, you know, PCAPs, which is SIP plus SRTP. So you already know all you have to do is find the encryption keys inside the SDP section of SIP, take it, use uh, SRTP decrypt to go ahead and decrypt it, recover the RTP stream, 
and then go ahead and recover DTMF just like we've done right now. Now the same thing would happen with TLS RSA provided that you have the server's private key which is also something which I've provided. Now, I'm not going to repeat the same exercises. I think we've done a lot of decryption exercises for SIP plus SRTP as well as for you know SIP over TLS RSA uh, plus RTP provided you have the secret key. So I'm just going to leave that as an exercise to you. So thank you. And in the next video, we'll look at the voicemail passcode recovery, what I was talking about right now. So this is what I have in mind for this video. Thank you.